This is Duke University. Well, thank you very much for introducing me. And of course, I would like to start with thanking Angela uh, and Amy for organizing this event so wonderfully. And also, I would like to thank the, the uh, hosting universities here at Duke and tomorrow at Wake Forest University for making this event possible. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here uh, together with you, uh, some well-known faces and some new faces, and it's really a pleasure. Um, and I think one of the challenges of this, this, this event is also to, uh, to bridge the, um, the, the panels that we, uh, that we are in. So I think one of the challenges is to bridge the, 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 <clears throat> the first panel on the more cultural elements with what we are presenting on the more policy-related political issues uh, with regard to Romani issues. So I hope that this is also uh, something um, we could do in the, in the, in the discussion. Let, my, let me try to outline what I would like to uh, share with you today. Um, as the subtitle of my presentation already uh, suggests, um, I will focus on three notions or practices, if you may want, that are closely related to the precarious situation of the Roma in contemporary Europe. And these are Europeanization, securitization, and differential inclusion. Reflection upon these notions <clears throat> in Roma-related scholarship have been mobilized to be critical of several trends in the treatment of Roma minorities and migrants in Europe. Yet, I would like to briefly outline, firstly, how these debates often tend to remain Eurocentric and Roma-centric in scope, and secondly, also try to indicate the directions in which, according to me, we need to move on to challenge these centrisms and to redirect not only political and public debates about the Roma, but also Romani scholarship or scholarship on the Roma itself. And I was very happy to see that uh, uh, earlier today there were many invitations um, to do so or actually illustrations to do so. So in this respect, my presentation has primarily a conceptual and methodological focus and is more programmatic in kind, for it focuses on how, according to me, we need to redirect Roma-related scholarship beyond these centrisms. I would like to clarify how, in contemporary Europe, the various ways in which the Roma have been governed have gone together with ambiguous ways, ambiguous practices of bordering Europe, in which the Roma are treated on the one hand as the Europeans par excellence, and on the other hand, as those politicized subjects who still need, to put, still need to put in additional efforts to be considered and recognized as Europeans. So let me begin, I will follow these three um, concepts. Let me, let me begin uh, with the notion uh, of Europeanization. So usually this term, has been associated with the increased involvement of European institutions, and of course the EU most notably, in Roma-related affairs. Scholars such as Melanie Ram and Peter Vermeers have discussed the so-called Europeanization of Roma policy or Roma discourse. And following an ongoing trend in European studies, uh, European integration and governance studies, this process of Europeanizing the Roma issue is understood as the construction and development of Roma-related policies and discourses at the European level, and subsequently their transfer to an implementation at various domestic levels throughout Europe. And I think this has proven to be a valuable contribution to debates about the position of Roma in Europe, because it reveals most notably the discrepancies and also the tensions between the policy, the discursive and normative frameworks developed at EU level, and those articulated and implemented at national and subnational levels. Some of the things that also was brought up by Nidhi Trehan. So yet, these reflections remain Eurocentric in scope, I believe, both ethnographically and methodologically. <coughs> in their discussion of mechanisms of Europeanization, their major referent object is the Roma, and how they are framed but not, or at least to a significantly lesser extent, Europe and the ways in which representations and governance of Europe have substantially and simultaneously changed over the last few decades. I introduced the notion of um, the Europeanization of Roma representation uh, a couple of years ago, and though this notion has sometimes been understood along similar lines 
as that of the Europeanization of the Roma issue, I think it nevertheless significantly uh, differs from the latter. And partially, I introduced this notion to challenge the Eurocentrism and also the Roma centrism in many Roma related academic, public, and political debates. So let me try to explain how. Of course, briefly, when you, when you present a paper and, and summarizes everything, you believe that you always present a, correct, a caricature of your own work. So uh, here's the caricature. Um, the Europeanization of Roma representation relates, first of all, to the ways in which, since the collapse of state socialism, the Roma have been increasingly problematized in terms of their Europeanness. Secondly, it involves the classifying of a variety of groups living all over Europe under the umbrella term Roma. And I think this is a categorization which is a precondition for any kind of Europeanization of Roma policy. And first, thirdly, and I believe most significantly, it entails the devising and assembling of various large-scale, Europe-wide governmental programs that are dedicated to, well, most notably, the inclusion, anti-discrimination, participation, development, security, and last but not least, the empowerment of the Roma. The research agenda that is related to um, an analysis of the Europeanization of Roma representation tries to shift the focus from a policy-centric question about how we could or should solve complex Roma-related socio-economic and political problems to a more fundamental, if you want, epistemological question. And this question could be posed in the following way, and I quote from the screen, how could the existence of various so-called Romani groups in many countries in Europe actually develop into a question and transform into a European issue? or into a specific set of European problems to which diverse and often mutually conflicting policies, tools, interventions, measures, and processes attempt to give an answer. Let me indicate what this shift of focus implies. The shift aims at analyzing changing Roma representations and also self-representations in close relationship to simultaneously shifting articulations of Europe. In other words, the perspective of the Europeanization of Roma representation starts from considering both Europe and the Roma as its key referent objects. Its aim is to interrogate how shifting practices of European governance and changing migration border citizenship and security regimes in Europe have closely and fundamentally gone together with new or reshaped ways of problematizing the Roma. Let me try to make this a bit less abstract. Yeah, there's probably my mathematical background. Um, a bit less abstract by very roughly discussing the problematization of the Roma in terms of security or what in the literature is usually called um, their securitization. Securitization is usually understood as the framing, and, and a very dominant framing in contemporary Europe, of the Roma as a public order or a security problem. And often these debates have particularly focused on political speech acts in national uh, or European political and public arenas. The probably most notorious example by now is related to the still ongoing expulsion of Romani, Romanian and Bulgarian citizens with a Roma background from France. Scholarly analysis have focused very much on the discrepancy between EU rules and norms on the one hand and the compliance of EU member states with these standards on the other. Or, alternatively, they have concentrated on the speech acts of politicians at various institutional levels and on either the political uses and abuses of the Roma issue or the lack of political will to apply the national, European, and international rules adequately. Significantly less attention, though, has been paid to what I have called the referent object Europe, which in this context implies at least two related focal points of research. And of course, uh, more and more research is and has been done in this direction as well. First, I think we have to investigate the ways in which the differentiations among EU citizens 
and the treatment of the Roma in terms of security and as second rank citizens is inherently related to how the EU is institutionally ambiguously organized. And this analysis involves an investigation of the intimate nexus of security and citizenship and of the ambiguities related to the way in which freedom of movement has been articulated within European institutional architectures. Secondly, I think it is not sufficient to focus on how the Roma have been framed as a security or, if you may want, a development issue without taking into account how the understanding of security and development in, but also beyond Europe, has significantly changed. And I think I won't be able to explain this briefly, but in general, I think we have seen a shift from a concentration on interstate security and conflict to a focus on people-oriented intra-state security and conflicts between ethnicized and culturalized groups. And as I have explained much more extensively in the paper that I prepared for this event, the assembling of these new security and development agendas in Europe with neoliberal forms of governing has resulted into a very one-sided focus on the Roma as a problem group while seriously neglecting the more complex socio-economic, political, and historical reasons for their marginalization. So in other words, to challenge Euro and Roma centrism and to analyze the impact of securitization on the ways in which the Roma can exercise their citizenship we have to connect our investigations to the ways in which both security and development regimes in Europe have profoundly changed and impacted on the position of the Roma. Let me finally relate this to the notion of differential inclusion that has a couple of years ago been introduced by um, Sandro Metzadra and Brett Nielsen very roughly said, but I cannot do justice to the way in which they have introduced it, this notion embodies a critique of an ultra-rigid binary opposition of inclusion and exclusion in Roma-related scholarship. And I think Julia also to some extent was pointing into the direction. So they, Metzadra and Nielsen, have introduced differential inclusion, uh, differential inclusion as a notion to articulate processes of filtering and selecting that refer to multiple and shifting skills, ratings, and evaluations. And I think that despite ongoing practices of displacement and marginalization, the Roma are not the classical outsiders understood as those who are forcefully excluded. Rather, they are, in highly ambiguous ways, of course, treated as the internalized outsiders to be included as participating, productive, and so-called true Europeans the true Europeans, as they were called in um, um, the Council of Europe documents of 1993 and the round table on the true Europeans uh, of the European Commission way back in uh, 1996, I think. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> so Roma are, of course, included in the spaces of labor and citizenship and do contribute to their production and reproduction despite the fact that this is not recognized very often. I think this approach has three important implications for a Roma-related research agenda. First item on the agenda, if we consider research on the Roma along similar lines as relatively new fields such as African-American studies, diaspora studies, or Jewish studies, we can understand it as an attempt to challenge the persistent trend to treat national European or American history in disciplinary isolation and to render minority histories and experiences marginal and insignificant. Yet the gradual disciplinarization of minority-related studies has historically always tended to become the equivalent of academic isolation. Therefore, I think we need to avoid <laughs> treating Romani studies or Roma-related scholarship in disciplinary isolation, and we need to diversify and de-ethnicize the scholarly lenses through which we study Roma in order to interdisciplinarize research on them more adequately and more profoundly. And one way to do so, as Angela has done, is to focus on intersectionality. And of course, it's also very prominent in the work of, of Julia Tzadai. 
The second item on the agenda directly relates to this first point. So I think we need to connect the position of Roma to that of other irregularized minority and even majority groups beyond ethnic difference and space, including illegalized migrants, Muslim minorities, and the working poor, which is also, I think, very prominent in your work and in, in Viola's work. Um, and this is not only a call, I think, for a much more interdisciplinary and comparative research, but also, and more fundamentally, a call for interrogating the common conditions under which precarious lives in Europe are produced and reproduced. My third and final suggestion for how we should redirect Roma-related scholarship relates to this second point. If we want to analyze the common conditions under which security, border, citizenship and migration regimes in Europe contribute to the production and reproduction of precarious lives, then we also need to put those minorities that are constantly or frequently irregularized, irregularized at the heart of critical studies of security, border, citizenship and migration. And this is also fortunately a new trend within these fields of study. Even more fundamentally, we also need to put minorities that are constantly or repeatedly irregularized, the Roma included, at the heart of interrogations of how these contemporary security, border, citizenship, and migration regimes are or could be challenged, redirected, and changed. And I found it really promising uh, also to see the kind of public arts in Europe to which um, uh, Tim May also referred, uh, which is very much focusing on making public these things and trying to use public art projects um, in order to, um, to challenge these um, contemporary regimes. So similarly, examining the Roma from the angle of the Europeanization of their representation makes it possible to move beyond Eurocentric analyses and to interrogate the ways in which the Roma are ambiguously governed in terms of their Europeanness. To make such an interrogation possible, I have suggested we need to embed the Europeanization of Roma representation into an analysis of how the Roma have historically and recently been governed at the biopolitical borders of Europe and how, simultaneously, they have contributed to the contestation of these bordering regimes. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to the questions. Thank you.